Welcome, students, to today's lecture on retrobulbar optic neuritis. In this comprehensive session, we will delve into the intricate details of the anatomy, etiology, clinical presentation, diagnosis, management, prognosis, and association with multiple sclerosis. By the end of this lecture, you will have a thorough understanding of this optic nerve disorder and its implications. So let's begin. The optic nerve is a crucial pathway that carries visual information from the eye to the brain. It consists of millions of nerve fibers that converge at the optic disc, cross over at the optic chiasm, and continue to the thalamus for further processing. Retrobulbar optic neuritis refers to an inflammation of the optic nerve that occurs behind the eyeball. It can have multiple underlying causes, including viral infections, such as herpes simplex virus and Epstein-Barr virus, autoimmune disorders, such as multiple sclerosis and systemic lupus erythematosus, and inflammatory conditions, such as sarcoidosis and giant cell arteritis. The exact pathogenesis is not fully understood, but it is believed to involve immune-mediated processes, leading to demyelination and axonal damage within the optic nerve. Patients with retrobulbar optic neuritis typically present with rapid-onset vision loss, often affecting one eye initially. The vision loss is characterized by decreased visual acuity, color desaturation, and a central scotoma. The inflammation of the optic nerve is usually painless, although some patients may experience discomfort with eye movements. The clinical course can be monophasic or recurrent, with most patients experiencing spontaneous recovery within weeks to months. Differentiating retrobulbar optic neuritis from other causes of optic neuropathy is important. Retrobulbar optic neuritis typically presents with acute onset, unilateral involvement initially, young age of onset, visual field defects, and good recovery of vision. Other conditions have different features and risk factors. Several diagnostic tools and tests can aid in the evaluation and accurate diagnosis of retrobulbar optic neuritis. These include a comprehensive ophthalmic examination, visual acuity assessment, color vision testing, for example, Ishihara plates, pupillary examination, visual field testing, for example, Humphrey visual field analysis, and fundoscopy to evaluate the optic disc appearance. Additional investigations such as optical coherence tomography, OCT, and visual evoked potentials, VEPS, can provide valuable objective measurements of retinal and visual pathway function, respectively. Magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, is important in diagnosing retrobulbar optic neuritis. It can show hyperintense lesions in the optic nerves, known as Dawson's fingers, indicating demyelination. MRI can also rule out other causes and assess for associated brain or spinal cord lesions. Visual evoked potentials, VEPS, are electrophysiological tests used to assess the functional integrity of the visual pathway, including the optic nerves. In retrobulbar optic neuritis, VEPS may reveal prolonged latency or reduced amplitude, indicating impairment in the conduction of visual signals. VEPS are particularly useful in objectively monitoring the progression of the disease and evaluating response to treatment. The management of retrobulbar optic neuritis involves both acute and long-term approaches. In the acute phase, high-dose intravenous corticosteroids, such as methylprednisolone, are commonly administered to reduce inflammation and facilitate recovery. Oral corticosteroids may also be used in some cases. Long-term management focuses on addressing any underlying conditions, such as multiple sclerosis or systemic immune disorders. Treatment may involve immunomodulatory therapies, such as interferons or monoclonal antibodies, to reduce the risk of recurrent episodes and preserve visual function. Corticosteroids are important for managing retrobulbar optic neuritis. High-dose intravenous methylprednisolone is given for 3 to 5 days to reduce inflammation and improve vision. However, the dosage and duration should be carefully considered due to potential side effects. The prognosis for retrobulbar optic neuritis is generally favorable, with most patients experiencing significant improvement in vision within weeks to months. However, some individuals may have residual visual deficits or experience recurrent episodes. Poor prognostic factors include older age, severe initial visual loss, extensive involvement of optic nerves on imaging, and the presence of other associated disorders such as multiple sclerosis. Regular follow-up and monitoring of visual function are essential to detect any changes or recurrent disease activity. Retrobulbar optic neuritis is strongly linked to multiple sclerosis, MS, an autoimmune disease causing central nervous system demyelination. About 50 to 60% of patients with retrobulbar optic neuritis will develop MIS clinical and radiological markers aid MS diagnosis, and long-term immunomodulatory therapy may be needed. Immunomodulatory therapies are key for managing retrobulbar optic neuritis in multiple sclerosis. Medications like interferons, glutirmer acetate, and monoclonal antibodies, for example, natalizumab, ocrelizumab, modify the immune response, 
decreasing relapse risk and delaying disability progression. Therapy choice considers disease activity, patient tolerance, and treatment objectives. In summary, retrobulbar optic neuritis is a condition causing sudden vision loss due to inflammation of the optic nerve. It is often linked to viral infections and autoimmune disorders. A comprehensive ophthalmic evaluation, visual field testing, and MRI findings help diagnose it. Corticosteroids are crucial for acute management, and long-term treatment focuses on addressing underlying conditions like multiple sclerosis. Regular follow-up and personalized treatment strategies are important for optimal visual outcomes. Thank you for watching, and I encourage you to learn more about ophthalmology.